Fred Couples for birdie to move within one of the lead. The champion in 1984, Fred Couples, moves into a tie for second place. Am I a better putter now? I don't think so. I just think uh, some days I really, really feel comfortable, and in other days, you know, honestly, I don't. Uh, and it's unfortunate that, you know, I, I win tournaments, obviously, because I putt well, and I lose them because I don't. I mean, it's, that's the way my game is. Now to the fifth, the par four, Colin Montgomery, with a chance to move within one of the lead. And Monty was lost over 30 pounds in the last three months is a very big part of this picture. And out of the fourth, and the leader, Tommy Tolles, Roger there. From the dead center of the fairway, 120 yard. Good looking shot. It should come down the hill toward the flag. Got to worry about it spinning back too much. These greens are really damp, John. Certainly anything in a low area. Because I was so inexperienced at, at any part of my career, um, as far as, you know, having a lead in a major, major event like that, I just, I, I could not find enough time to occupy myself, to keep from getting distracted. Every time I looked, you know, even in the the the, um, the, the tournament, you know, as the, the early coverage, you know, I see my name, I see my name, I see yesterday's interviews, I read about it in the newspaper, I could not get away from it. The 13, uh, this on tape a moment ago, Wayne Grady is eight birdie and a share of the lead at 14 under par, back to four. David Duvall, who grew up in the Jacksonville area and as a young aspiring golfer who would come here with his dad, uh, Bobby, a golf pro, and look for his favorites, try to get autographs on his golf cap. Now trying to win this big championship, which would be his first PGA Tour win. From the very left side of the fairway, a little bit blind from the hillside ahead of him, 110 yard pitching range. Ball to come back and left, it should. We're at the par four sixth hole, second shot for Colin Montgomery, one off the pace of Wayne Grady and Tommy Tolles. Gary? Dick Collin has hit just another perfect tee shot. He's in the left center of the fairway, 120 yards to the front edge of the green. Flag on 13 more. It's down in the low area to the left part of the green, and anything slightly right of the flag will spin right down toward the hole. Should be just a nice, comfortable nine iron. Montgomery is now 32, Europe's number one player last year, leading money winner the last three years in Europe. Very impressive win in Dubai two weeks ago. Um, Really, his first chance at showing off his new physique, and uh, he's uh, won there. And I think uh, he was close to being the best player in the world coming into this year, and this might have been the difference. It's a good looking shot. It's going slightly left of the flag. To 14, Dan. And the fourth shot of Wayne Grady here at 14, Dan Pull. Well, pretty straightforward bunker shot. Oh, he hits the two, stick. Dan Hicks, he had 219 yards to the flag and came over top of a two iron, hit the tree, and then he got a little cute with his third shot, left it in the bunker. Back to four. The seven. Fred Couples, 167. To the par four, seventh. No, it's not. Ready, birdie, three, five, and six. Stands one back of the co-leaders, Grady and Tolls, and back to four. David Duvall at the fourth for birdie. Good opportunity loss for the 24-year-old Duvall who makes his home here in Ponte Vedra. 
Current leader board tolls back in the lead. Grady one back. Fred Couples and Colin Montgomery, two big golf names, only two off the pace. As you check the elite field and win this championship, you know you have beaten the best. Fred Funk, another local. He's moved here to Ponte Vedra. Let's go to the seventh. All right, pick this. Fred Couples now for a share of the lead. Third straight birdie. And just left it out a little bit. So that par at seven will keep him one back at 1300. Stand, please. Six scoring before the cut. Final round, one of the best. This is just the fifth event that uh, Freddie's played in 1996. Uh, let's move ahead to 14. And this for Wayne Grady's bogey. It'll break right to left up the hill. And Wayne Grady suddenly has come to a halt. A double bogey at 14, and he's back to 12 under, back to 8. Phil Mickelson, even par for the round. This is second shot to par three eighth, and he has fooled around with this shot for some time. Very bad lie. And look at that, didn't even get it to the green. This course can be awfully mean with a poor shot. Let's go to six. This par four, Ernie Ells. And Gary Koch is there. Dick, Ernie's uh, second shot from the fairway bunker guarding the left-hand side of the fairway came out a little long, and he's gone over the green into the fairly thick rough pretty difficult little pitch because he needs to really judge the speed as he's coming down off this shelf down to the lower level where the flag is cut and that's got to slow down So Ells, who at age eight, his birthday present was Jack Nicklaus's Guide to Golf. That's uh, part of his inspiration. He was more a tennis player then. Nicklaus was uh, won this event three times, uh, all three before they moved to Ponte Vedra. We have some interesting pairings today, uh, some made in heaven pairings, really, you know, really with Grady playing with Elkington. You can see his lie up against that little collar and he's going to blade it with that sand wedge. Well, he actually, he uh, just picked it right out of there. Let's take a look at that. He just did a little brush is what he did. He just set it in there. It looked like he was going to blade it, but uh, just took a normal watch, a nice brush. Didn't have to hit the ground. That's a lot of people think you got to take a divot if you're a pro. At least the perception is, but those chip shots are better off just brushing it off. Let's go to the fifth. R4. David Duval, second shot. Well, both players have driven the ball perfectly here. David Duval is away, has 179 yards to the flag. Gonna go with the six iron pin set on the right side of the green. Just past midway back. He's been tied for the lead in this tournament for greens in regulation, 83%. Well, I talked to him before the round today, Dick, and he says he's very pleased with all aspects of his game right now, particularly his iron play. And as you know, Johnny, this is an iron player's paradise here at this golf course. It is. Got this ball started the center of the green, working right toward the flag. Good looking golf shot. Pretty chance for Duval. He is currently two behind the leader. 79 yards. Eagle two, birdie five, stands at 13 under. Two back of the championship leader, Tommy Tolles. Bob, that was a six iron, and he loves these right pin placements. Moves every shot left to right. It's going slightly right of the flag. Very closest we've seen so far today. I hit to eight. 
bred couples where he has this putt of some little inside of two feet, just inside the right edge of the hole. That's it. Fred Couples goes to 14 under and just one stroke behind Tommy Tolles. Fred off birdies at three, five, six, and eight. One here in 1984. And let's go back to the seventh. That's Ernie Hill standing in the fairway. Gary Koch, you've been with this pairing all day. Well, as sharp as Montgomery has been, uh, Ells has been dull. He has hit uh, several very indifferent shots. Just hasn't seemed to take advantage of the few good ones he did hit. He's missed a couple of short putts. And uh, right now needs to get the momentum going in the other direction. 174 yards. Taking a seven iron and he's going to have to stop it. Played uh, very indifferently in 96. This is good. A little left of the flag. Welcome back at the par 4 6, second shot for Tommy Tolles, leader by one. See a little uphill liar there, uh, that swale. Very high shot. Right underneath the hole, Let's get a lot of spin. He puts more spin on the ball than the average pro. Now the second shot of his playing competitor, Duval. That a nine iron from 133. Whoa. Just left of the flag. Popular little spot there. Ahead to seven. And the birdie attempt of Ernie Els. Bobby's got about 15 feet. Should swing a little bit from his left to right. Just one bogey at six stands at nine under and ahead to 15. Par four, 15. Grady for par. Check that. That was for bogey, we now understand. So uh, Wayne Grady uh, falling into some tough times here the last three holes. Back at seven. To update the leaderboard, Fred Couples, who won at just 24 years of age here. Just one off. Tommy Tolles lead and the pressure is on the young 29 year old Tolles from these top players. Colin Montgomery, one of them. He's only two back. I was thinking along those same lines, but the more I thought about it, I was thinking, you know, nobody doesn't have pressure. And so I'm not so sure the pressure is much different on Tolles than anybody else because they all want this so badly. So, uh, you know, Colin would love to win this thing. Obviously, he's had a lot of close calls and big tournaments. Well, that's a good start, Johnny. Eagle at two, birdie at five, birdie at seven. I really do believe he could be the best player in the world at the end of this year. I, I just, he's very close right now. And, and when I said uh, this losing the weight, uh, he was so close, just that little bit of extra, sort of like Peter Jackson when he did his little uh, weight regimen and uh, got in shape and what it did for his game. Fuzzy Zeller off the tee at 13, 175 yards. This hole has yielded a lot of birdies today. And our final group, Tolles and Duvall, each in quest of their first PGA Tour win. Roger? Well, this putt from about 18 feet from the fringe doesn't do a whole lot. Might move a little left as it loses speed. Bounce back from a shaky start after bogeying one. Birdies at two and the last hole five. Roger, these greens uh, probably have as many putts that will break towards uh, the back of the green or want to go that way as any greens anywhere. Uh, we have that at 18. Many, many of the greens will do that, and it's it's tough to, you know, make yourself play a putt that'll break towards the back of the green or not break at all because they just always usually break to the front. Well, they're very tough to read, that's for sure. This one a little bit uphill. Yeah, he never hit it. He wouldn't have made it anyway. I don't think he'd have read that break as well as you did, Roger. Just hard to do, even though he's a local boy and he knows this course probably as good as anybody. To the longest hole on the course, the par 5 ninth, 582 yards, second shot for Couples. 
295 yards out, so he's trying to lay it out to the, whatever his magical number is, which is probably about, well, if I was guessing 90, 95 yards. So he needed to hit that about 200 yards. Uh, I'm not so sure he's that close, but we'll see. He and Montgomery both in about the same spot. Couples with 11 PGA Tour wins. Montgomery looking for his first here on this soil has 10 European wins. Wayne Grady. This is second shot at 16. The reachable par five. Playing the easiest of all the holes today. Dave Murray's got 246 to the flag. Left front 224. Looks like he's got a forward on. He's probably just going to try to put it up that left side and see if he can catch that slope and let it uh, feed down towards the hole. Well, I would think so with the forward right at the television tower. And this guy has not made a par since the seventh hole, guys. He's getting over top of a lot of shots, hitting everything left. The last five shots he's hit all went left. At the eighth hole, Colin Montgomery. Dave, that was a three iron. Ball's headed to the right. Gonna need a break if it's gonna catch the green. Well, he did get the break, Gary. Mm. Rolls back on, and of course, this also is a hole that, where you just wanna put it on the green. That's uh, three here is not bad at all. Let's go back to six. Tommy Tolls for birdie. He went to school on David Duval's putt. I've got a two-shot lead over my playing partner. And, you know, I, I'm not thinking that he's going to go out and shoot five or six hundred. You know, he's, he's feeling the same pressure I am. You know, he's, he, he's, he's a young man like myself. And I, I pictured maybe the best score coming out of the pack, you know, a, a five or a six under, you know, putting them at, you know, 14 or 15. Back on that to 17. Yeah. Now, speaking of someone under control with this swing for years and years, Tom Watson. He stands at eight under on the tournament, one under on the championship, one under on the day. This is a nine iron. Yardage 140. Whoa. It will stay up. That's the Tiger Woods spot. On 17 when he won the U.S. Amateur. It is tee <laughs> shot there. Made the birdie putt. And it gets everybody excited when he gets near that water on that hole. Just a smile from Tom. Just a smile. Interesting. His game used to be sort of out of control. Tee to green and unbelievable putter most of his career. Now he's, look at this reaction. Now at the ninth, the third shot for Fred Couples into this par five. 107 yards out. Just, um, well, I'm not sure how far he hits a lob wedge, but, um, or sand wedge. This is probably a big sand wedge. Aiming way left, as you can see. And he told me he is driving the ball so good, he just can't believe it. And he gets mostly carry. Ball's going a little right. Red couples just off the collar there in three couples with four birdies on the front side well he's definitely in a position that uh, he could uh, do several things here he could uh, a little pitch and run or he could just uh, take a lofted wedge and uh, which has what i would play and uh, just land it on and run it right in the hole it's running right to what grain there is the fred clouck and the crew these greens are so pure it's almost uh I just couldn't believe it this morning looking at the greens, but uh, this is definitely makeable. Well, he went with a little pitch and run, and it looked like it was in. But uh, 
These greens are so good when you've got a 10 footer, it should be in to 13. And Fuzzy Zeller for his birdie at 13. This will break his left to right. Although you won't see much of the break, you can tell by the reaction that Fuzzy's missed it. And Fuzzy will remain at 11 under. Back to seven. Second shot, Tommy Tolles, right rough, must go up over the trees. Mm. Chin is back right. Uh, but he does catch the edge of the green. Third shot of Wayne Grady, struggling a little bit in this downhill line. Better slow down, Wayne. Better slow down. That lake's back there. Starting, this. At, starting at eight, you got to get this, Dave. Birdie, 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 bogey, birdie, birdie, double bogey, bogey, and then this. Well, let's go to nine. And for his par, Freddie Couples to stay two off Tommy Toll's lead. turn couples four under par today 14 under for the championship back at seven birdie attempt Tommy tolls at seven should move right oh, he blows it considerably by let's move to nine second shot for Colin Montgomery currently two behind the leader very surprising club selection here. Wow, that's some confidence right there. Back to the eighth. R3. 216 yards. Roger Maltby with this group. Roger. Well, Tommy Tolles has the honor, and he has really played solidly today, Dave. He said he learned a lot from last week's experience and, and told me earlier today, say back on the sixth hole, he drove the ball in the right trees yesterday. Thought that was a mental mistake, came out, hit two iron off the tee and ended up making birdie on the hole today when he had to struggle for par yesterday. So he's learning from his mistakes, which of course is so important. It's the trying to get the you know longer irons and the, and the drivers you know to go exactly the shape that we're looking for. And uh, you know, and then we're, we're on the putting green as well. You know, he tried to keep me away from the, the, the really, really short putts because you don't want to really show your nerves. Really go with the long putts, go with a lot, you know, a lot of speed type putts. Um, just things that you rehearse every, every, every day that you don't really pay attention on. You know, now all of a sudden my focus was, was really, it's all about, you know, is it, is it, is it going in? Is that driver going the exact sh shape that I'm looking for? And if it, if it wasn't or whatever, it was because I was showing my nerves. Sound of thin, Rog. It was thin and a little bit right. And it's got to get up, hits on top of a mound, and I can't see it. Well, they got a pretty good blank, Rod. It bounced toward the green. It stayed in the second cut of rough, but better than that bunker where he'd have a pretty hard shot to play. And David Duval is deliberate, that's for sure. I've never seen a guy get ready, take so much time getting ready, and then get up, or get partly up, and always back off, it seems like. But he's a heck of a player. He is that. This ball is cutting away from the flag at the right center of the green. But on, not bad. Johnny, as you pointed out, a very aggressive second shot and talking to Colin earlier today, he said he has been displeased with how he's played the par fives, wanted to be a little more aggressive. He's left himself 83 yards. Well, slightly right of the flag, turning in toward it if it's far enough. Not bad. The 17th. And the birdie attempt of Steve Elkington. And you can see just how much it is raining, which isn't much, but what a putt. Oh. Tommy Tolles, second shot to par three eighth. 
to slow down. It's all right with a little downhill lie there. Was that lie bad? Oh, well, let's go to nine first. At the ninth, chance for birdie. Colin Montgomery pull within one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Montgomery. You like this Scottish weather? To 10. 170 yards. Perfect hole location for him. He's got a bit of a hook lie and a fade shot. Don't be too far. No, no, no. That's some real commentary between him and his caddy. Caddy says, don't be too far. He said, no, no, no. Large vocal gallery cheering couples at eight, Duval. This for a birdie. And he had to leave it short. David, 13 under and three shots behind his fellow competitor that he's with, Tommy Tolles. He's going to wait and see what Mr. Tolles does. It works. Well, he's got a great looking putting stroke, John. Well, not every and young player would be doing that in this uh, opportune time in his life. <laughs> well, you know, you talk about all the pressure and so forth. Let's go to 18 first. And to finish his round, Tom Watson for par. Currently eight under for the championship. Sort of a tricky read here. This thing actually tries to go left. Players just cannot believe it. That's like I told earlier in the show, you get these putts and you just swear they're going to be straight or break right and towards the front of the greens and they go the other way a lot of times. Well, look at those four solid rounds for Watson. Very similar putt to the one I made at 18 yesterday, a little right to lefter. Good time to do it right here, Freddie. Thought he made it, and uh, he just had maybe a titch too much speed. Is all good stroke. The 92 Masters winner. He's uh, searching for his 12th career title and second here at the Players Championship. To the ninth tee, and the leader Tommy Tolles. Cohen, the driver. Of course, a par five, 582 yards with a very easy front right. Pin placement. Easiest pin placement on the green, I think. Here's John Daly on the tee at 13. Seven iron for John. 175 yards. This just a moment ago. Daly at nine under as he came to 13. We'll catch a little bit of that slope. I think he's the only golfer in the world when he's 90 old. Swing will be the perfect length. Let's <laughs> check the scores. Tolls by one over Montgomery, two ahead of Couples. Duval, his playing competitor, is three behind. BJ Singh makes the turn at 11 under, five behind. Tim here in a solid tournament for the winner at Honda, nine under. To 13. Well, you saw the leaderboard and Daly at 10 under. This left to right birdie at 13. To get him there. That is the 14th birdie of the day at 13, the fourth for John Daly, and who knows? He's six off the pace, back to nine. Jay Haas for birdie. Is that uh, very flat there around that hole? Not much break, so you're going to see a slew of birdies here uh, in the next little bit as we cover this hole. Oz makes the turn even par today, 11 under for the championship. Back out to the fairway at nine. Roger. Tommy Tolles first to play from the very right side of the fairway. Got a long iron layup here, the green not reachable in two. Critical to get the ball on the fairway here preferably the right center of the fairway. And got this ball going left. Needs to get down. 
and that will be in the bunker left and behind those trees. He has got big problems here. I had the option of going for it, you know, maybe taking a three wood and hitting it up the right side. But with the whole location being on the, on the front left there, um, I thought the better option was to go ahead and lay back. And I, I think it was just a four iron, just hit it up the right side. It's another, like I said, one of those mistake type of shots that if you're going to miss it, you have to air to the right side because then the green opens up to where you can you know, bounce the ball up depending on what kind of lie you get in the rough. And I just overhooked it, um, got down in the waste area down there, and it's arguably, if you ask you know, almost all the players what's the toughest shot in golf, they'll tell you that's you know, anywhere the 60 to 80 yard wedge shot. And that's exactly what I left myself with a humongous live oak in my way. Kenny Perry for birdie, and Perry's been on a run. He's birdied four of the last five holes to go 12 under. The leader after the first round, Perry, who shared it with Justin Leonard at 65. And on the proper tier, the screen has got a couple different levels and a lot of break. Perry, a Kentuckian, cheering the Wildcats win and advance to the final last night. It's another one of those uh, putts from the uh, back of the green that does not break towards the front. Let's go back to the tee. Fred Couples, two behind holes. One of the best rhythms on the tour. Would you agree with that, Johnny? Yeah, it's just uh, when I uh, do clinics, um, I ask people who they think had the best swings, and I've done hundreds of these things, and people think this is the best swing in golf and you analyze it there's some things that aren't according to Hoyle but uh, when you look at the rhythm and the effort and the effortless uh, action it's unbelievable and speed and power and that one he put he put the hammer down I'm telling you but uh, he's paying the price got ahead of it what happens when you pick up a lot of speed coming down you have a good opportunity to miss it right Back at nine, Tommy Tolles and David Duval both in trouble trying to hit the smallest green on the course. Roger? Well, Tommy Tolles has got huge problems here. He's got a very, very awkward stance with his feet up above the ball. A very steep bank behind him. Got a tree in front of him that I don't know if he'll go under or try to go around. I would assume he's going to have to go underneath and work this ball from right to left. But this is not easy at all. Roger, though, with this shot, he literally has the on, only pin placement that you could sort of have a shot at it, though, huh? I mean, he could hit a little low draw and hit it well short and run it up right onto the green. Be a heck of a shot, John. This is tough. Oop. Came out left. Caught yeah. one of the oak trees and has come down left of the bunkers. <laughs> golf coach in college used to tell me you know never follow up a mistake with, with with a mistake that you've already made and that's exactly what I ended up doing you know I, I might have felt comfortable I might have been nervous you know I'm not really sure a lot of times when you get thrown a curveball like I just gave myself um, you know the the, the, ner the nerves tend to go away because you're really focused on something very very particular but I honestly thought I could pull it off Look at how much he's standing above it, plus his feet are at such a funny angle. And his last thought must have been, let's make sure I hook it. Colin Montgomery off the fairway, Gary. 170 Big. yards. Yeah, that's the first fairway he's missed today. That's a six iron. It's going just left of the flag, and it's up. So Montgomery on the green side bunker. Back to Fred Couples. Dan? Well, he's just going to take a little eight iron or seven iron and punch it down the fairway. Got a good line in the pine needles. Got a good break. He's taking it up the left side and low. Good play. That's a smart shot there. He could have laid it up left if he wanted it where you were viewing there, but uh, that was the way to go. To 16. Par 5, 16, Tom Laban, second shot. This with a two iron. It's looking good if it just carries that bunker. 
and it did right up into the green now watch this it's going to break down just fast hole high beautiful second shot by tom layman as it well tolls has no bargain from here he has an oak tree that will has one branch in front of his ball hanging out and although it's only one branch mm. to get this ball anywhere near the hole john he's got to get it up in the air very quickly has to have a high trajectory and it's really kind of in that glide pattern if he could get out of here with six i'm sure he'd be very happy you can see he's looking at that branch you're talking about this is a defining hole for him so far get up. well he should be able to handle that from there that's not a bad spot at all a lot better than hitting that branch, that's for sure. Let's take a look at that. He peaked on the last shot uh, with his chin uh, right before he hit it and came over it. And he has a tendency to do that uh, on all of the shots. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if uh, that continues, just being so curious. But uh, you can't fault a guy that's made two bogeys in uh, this many holes, and he'll probably chip this in, for that matter. <laughs> Let's go to 11. Fred Couples' third shot at the par five. He's looking right at 134 yards, and the hard part about this is getting yourself to fly that ball all the way back to the flag, Johnny Miller, and there's a little ridge in front of it, and if you put it anywhere short and left, it spins right down the hill. The reason why uh, uh, we talked about uh, keeping it short of the hole over the green is pretty darn dead. It's just a good, solid pitching wedge for Freddie. He's got it going right at it. It's the right stick. It's a good play here. That says pretty good play. Well, Couples in position for a birdie that would pull him within one shot of the lead. We go to Colin Montgomery at 10. Well, Dick, his ball has come to rest against the rake in the bank of the bunker. He's going to mark its position, pick up the rake. If the ball moves, he's allowed to replace the ball in its original position. Let's go back to nine. Chip shot of Tommy Tolles says he's a terrible chipper. That's the book on him in college. I said, what have you done to improve that? He says, I'm still a bad chipper. He said, I just try to hit a lot of green, so I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> but the book on him is he can't chip very well. And you can see that was a very simple chip there, Johnny, and he's run that went well past. Yeah, it, you know, a lot of times you might hit a bad chip and it might go in from there. He didn't even hit it straight. For the first time he's uh, bogeyed any hole on the front side the entire week. This is for bogey for Tommy Tolls. Tricky little putt. Yeah, that shows me so much, Roger. I just can't believe how clutch that was. You know, if you look at any par five, the stroke average is always going to be four point something. And to walk away with six, you know, you just gave the, you know, 30 or 40 guys that are in contention, you know, one, one and a quarter shots that you don't, I don't need to give them. You know, maybe Tiger could give them to him or, you know, Phil Mickelson can give it to him. I can't, I can't spot someone like that on one hole. I had to 10 and the uh, third shot of Montgomery trying to find a stance. That's the one thing about this golf course is that, you, you know, it can be easy, but all of a sudden if you hit a few stray shots, you can get some lies you can't believe. It's mostly stances that you can't believe. That for his par. David Duvall at the ninth for par. Should move slightly right. Big save there. <laughs> Kenny Perry, currently 12 under par. Just to go 13 under. Boy, that was oh, quick. Cool. And if Fred Couples makes this putt, he will go to 15 under. Oh, man, that was a totally different stroke, Freddie. 
just blurred the downswing from the backswing, didn't finish the backstroke. You know, it's embarrassing. And at that time, it was too good of a round, you know, I mean, a, a, a three-footer or a four-footer, but this was like straight in from two feet. And I'm not saying I've never missed any, but at that time, it's one you don't really want to walk away with. It's just, uh, it will probably won't show up in slow motion, but you can see he hits up on it, leaves the toe open, but the, if you come down before you're ready putting, it usually goes right. Now Montgomery trying to save par. Remains at 15 under. Needs to put this in tight. Colin Montgomery, co-leader with Tommy Tolles. Important tee shot. Tolles 529 yards. I think he likes it. He stopped watching it. Kenny Perry, 13 under, two back of the leader. It'll come down off the ridge and move right to left toward the water. Beautiful pace, just burns the right edge. Great putt, though, from that top of the ridge for Perry, and he'll remain at 13 under the 17. T shot of Fuzzy Zeller coming up birdie at 16. Fuzz with a nine iron. The yardage is 140. Ah, well done. Fuzzy stands at 12 under par for the championship. And another birdie chance. So the updated leaderboard has Colin Montgomery and Tommy Tolles tied at 15 under, chased by Fred Couples, one back. Kenny Perry, David Duvall, two back. Mediate, fuzzy, three back. Lame and Mize, wait. See the name of David Frost, Ernie Ells at 10 under. Steve Elkington, past champion, and let's move back to 10. And Tommy Tolles. Roger. From the right side of the fairway, has 149 to the flag. And Johnny, this is one of those places out here. If the player was to air, he'd want to miss the green on the short side. Simple little chip, uphill chip from the right side of this green. Much better off than pulling the ball left into the center of the green and coming down that slope. That's right, and as you we noticed this morning when we were out there, uh, if you hit it just left of the flag, though, uh, it has a little bit of backboard sideboard effect and will feed down to that uh, pin placement. Good birdie opportunity, though, but you got to shake off number nine, see if you can do it. Standing this above it. This one nine He's got it a little bit left of the hole. I don't think it's far enough right to catch that slope, though, John. Well, he's probably pretty happy with that. Just uh, whenever you make a bogey, you want to not make a bogey the next hole, obviously. Ahead to 11 and Colin Montgomery at this par five. Gary? Going with a driver, 240 yards to the front edge, 268 to the hole. This is one aggressive play here. Yeah, remember how aggressive he was at 18 at Dubai when he won it. And he's had a great looking shot if it just gets up a little. Now caught the bunker fronting oh, the hit, screen. I think it just barely missed. That thing was tracking right on the middle of the green, too. What a great shot. And you can see it right there. It leaves himself a uh, very, very difficult, uh, long explosion uh, sand shot. You'd have to be there to play it to believe what he's got to play. To 12. Freddie Couples, eight feet, dead flat putt, slightly uphill. He moved a little bit on his last one. Let's see if he can stand still. Stroke this firmly right in the back, just to tie for the lead. All right, and have we got us a horse race. Second chat for Rocco Mediate, five consecutive birdies for this local resident. Good angle to come into the screen from 180 yards. Yes, Rocco.
pin place, but today, Dan, a little deeper into the green, so uh, it's, it's not the front part of the green doesn't uh, become as a, a bad a hazard. So you look to him to hang this out to the right. The pin sets up perfect for him, a little right to left. Just a nice, solid seven iron for him. Thin. Well, he hung it out right. Yeah, he came up out of that. It'll roll a little bit down to there's a three tiered green here. That's the second lowest portion that it's rolling into now and the pin set in the lowest portion. So Freddie will have to come over that ridge ahead to 17. Right, thank you Dan Hicks and a birdie attempt fuzzy Zeller. Can he make it two straight. Yes and fuzzy moves to 13 under two back. Of the three leaders. Third shot for Colin Montgomery at 11. Oh my word. That ball just a couple inches shorter would have backed right up there near the hole, but it caught in that uh, down slope by the time it got finished skidding. Gutsy shot there. Whew. Couples Montgomery and Tolls. Couples a former winner. Montgomery, Europe's best, but looking for his first win on American soil. Tolls. He too, after his first PGA Tour win, as we go to 18, and this birdie, this is mediate for his birdie, playing with Tom Lehman. Not a lot of break here. Great opportunity to have the greatest finish in history of this tournament. Rocco mediate. Birdies 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You talk, that's that's exciting. <laughs> Look at him. 66 for Mediate, who had herniated disc surgery a year and a half ago and finally feeling fit. And what a time to produce a string of birdies at home. A 66 today to match Patrick Burke's uh, best round so far. Now Montgomery, fourth shot at 11, this par five. Not a particularly difficult shot, Dick. He's got a pretty good lie. Taking the flag out, he thinks he can hold it. Back at 10, Tommy Tolls. This is a little right. And back at 13, Fred Couples having to come over this ridge. Johnny, give us an idea of what uh, challenge he has. Well, you can see there's a ridge line that runs right here, and he's actually coming up just slightly to this point. And then, of course, now it drops probably a foot and a half in, into here. So he almost wants to stop it about right there. If he can make the ball almost pause right in that area, he's got a chance to get it close. Of course, he can make it going quicker, but he, that takes a chance of three putting. So uh, I think it'll be uh, one of those putts where you just want to get it close with option to get lucky. Johnny, the good thing about this is he kind of pin high over there. If he's a little bit shorter, the putt really breaks hard left when it comes off the ridge. It's almost a straight putt coming down that hill. So basically, if he gets the right speed, look for this to be in tap in range. And you can see uh, the best way to look at this uh, putt is you can see the ball is about level with his caddy's hips. So once he gets to the halfway point, it's going to fall about the length of his leg. And pick up speed. faced with this uh, chip uphill to a back left pin placement. Very well done for Kenny Perry. Very much a part of the story at 13 under. And back to 11. 
and Monty's par putt. Disappointed with a five, a birdie hole for Montgomery. He took a shot at it with that long uh, wood approach. Now to Tolls. Boy, there's some club head speed right there. He doesn't like the look on his face. Might be right. Yeah. 18, Fuzzy Zeller coming home. Second shot. Fuzzy off birdies at 16 and 17. Perfect shot. Perfect shot for his draw, and he takes advantage of it. Oh, right there. Very nice fuzz. Another birdie chance to go 14 under for Zeller. Now to Couples and his par saving attempt. Tricky little putt coming down this hill. If he hits a little firm, it may stay up on the high side. If he gives it a little less uh, effort, it could break off to the right. So he needs to just hit this solidly left center. Tempo, Fred. In the center, Fred Couples pars the par 3 13. That's Tommy Toll's second shot at the par. 5 11th, and uh, he's off the fairway right. Let's go to the 14th tee. Par 4, 438 yards. Ideal tee shot, right center of the fairway. And Fred Couples has busted this tee shot down the slope. Perfect position to go after a back left pin placement today. Back to 12. As we pull back, Colin Montgomery second, par four twelfth. John, that was a sandwich, 104 yards. Needs to carry it all the way back to the hole. He's done it, Gary. He's pinned high about 10 feet to the right. Downhill putt for a birdie. Back to 11. And David Duvall. That a three wood from 232 front edge, 260 the hole, but he's cut it. It's going well right, and that has to hustler is going to get water. Water. Mm. Oh, that's a heartbreaking mistake by Duvall. That was a big opportunity right there. Well, he is aggressive, and that's been his pattern in uh, his uh, years since Georgia Tech. Well, there are those that feel he borderlines on cocky. He is certainly loaded with self-confidence. There's no question. Where'd that cross the hazard? That'll be the interesting thing, Roger. Well, I was in the right side of the fairway, John, and I really couldn't see from my angle. At 18, Fuzzy Zeller with a big round this final round. This is for birdie. And a 66. There's that putt that breaks to the back of the green. This man, runner-up to Norman a couple of years ago, checks in at 13 under on the front page of the leaderboard to 11. Tommy, Tommy Tolls. Tommy has about 108 yards to the flag. Perfect angle to go at it from this right fairway. Took his first peek at the leaderboard after putting out on 10, so he knows how he stands. I'm not going to pull one of those, you know, Jesper Farnovics and say that I didn't look at the board. You know, that's that's what they're there for. You know, they're. I, 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 you know, that's one of the biggest thrills for me is when I'm playing a round of golf is to see my name up there. You know, that's that's you know, I, honestly, that's. I mean, that means a lot to me. And every time today, you know, I watched my name go from the first to the third position or the fourth position, or, and every time it went back to the top. You know, that's. It's just a. It's a great feeling. Shaft, it's the right distance. <laughs> Flirted with that back bunker, and that is no good. You're looking at the 14th green, and the whole location today, way, way back left, just four paces off this large green. Fred Couples getting ready for his second. 11 of 13 greens in regulation today. Dan Pohl. Oh, 
Freddie just busted a drive down here. He's only got 170 to the flag. And earlier in the day, guys were hitting, you know, five and six irons in here. And uh, right now, Freddie's looking at just a hard eight iron. One thing, you can't miss it as long. It's really kind of a, a sucker pin placement over there. You want to go at this green, at the flag, but uh, if you go at it and miss it long or short, you're looking at five. So look for this to start out right. Just put it in play. Give himself about a 20-footer. left it way right. It's in the center of the green. And in the swale here at 14, Fred Couples at 15 under to 15. Second shot into this par four by Kenny Perry. Two off the lead. Stay the right. 426 yard hole. Good shot. Yeah, not a bad shot at all. Probably with the seven iron. To 12, Colin Montgomery for birdie to take sole possession of the lead. Pretty straight putt, about 12 feet, a little downhill. Oh. Back at the 11th, and Tommy Tolles is for birdie and the lead alone. It's got a lot of speed. Watch out. Here is this lengthy birdie attempt that Fred Couples has. Yeah, about 45 feet going up the hill. Pretty slow until it reaches the ridge. Once it covers over the ridge, it should pick up a little bit of pace, break a little bit to his right. Tough to pick up the speed on this putt. Oh, Fred really hit it. You have to to get it up that ridge, but a ticklish putt coming back down to save par. Ahead to 17. John Daly with a pitching wedge from 140. A little heavy. Well, so he hits it 137 with one hand. <laughs> he stands at nine under. Back to 15. Kenny Perry for birdie. Settled for par with, with that short putt and remain two behind the leaders. Colin Montgomery on the tee, par 3, 13th, 175 yards, six iron. And that will feed a little bit. Not bad for Monty. Back to 11. Tommy Tolles now trying to save his par. Got to keep this putt inside the cup. Not much break in this back tier. No tolls. Continues to share it with Couples and Montgomery. And we go to 14. And Fred Couples trying to save his par. Does not have a bogey in his round today. This one coming back down the hill. Well, under normal conditions, you'd say this is good, but these aren't normal conditions, Dan Hicks, and uh, these can get away from you real quick, real fast. The, the pace goes down this hill, so he's just going to give this a little bit of a tap and just get it online. In the center, Fred Couples remains tied for the lead at 15 under. It's Colin Montgomery tied with Freddie. This to take the lead, birdie at 13. Just didn't quite hit it enough. One of the leaders, Fred Couples, teeing off at 15. Oh. Hasn't won in the United States since the 94 Buick Open 19 long months ago, and his uh, fans are rooting heartily for him today. Tee shot of our co-leader. I should say one of our tri leaders, Tommy Tolles. Again, going with an iron, hole only 336 yards long. The ideal play is 
up the center, right center of this fairway to leave you a, a shot where you can see the flag. There's some mounds at the left side of the fairway that can block your view of the flag. He's in good shape. This hole today has yielded 21 birdies, so Tommy Tolles has a great opportunity to get to 16 under, put a little distance between him and Colin and Freddie. And Fred Couples. This from 156. Pins way back, 30 back. He's got to carry it back on that ridge. He's just going to put a little <coughs> nice move on an 8-iron here, bring it in high. Should set up real good for his shot here. If anything, you want to miss this a little left. Really swinging at these short irons well. He's taking it in high, got it left to the flag a little bit. Nakable putt. From 115 yards, one of our tri leaders. Pins right there. He couldn't even see it, Johnny. It was behind that mound. What a great shot. Wow. Great opportunity to go 16 under. Colin Montgomery off the tee, 438 yards. Key tee shot. Working it left to right. Should be in the center. Not real long. But in good shape. Nice flat spot there. Head to 16. Second shot of Kenny Perry to the 497 yard par five. Good looking shot. Just up the left side needs to move a little to the right. The slope ought to take it back down. A very good shot by Kenny Perry, who is at this point 13 under and has that putt to go of 15 and join the other three at the top of the leaderboard as you see. What is happening? Jay Haas, 12 under, is lurking around. Fred Funk, of course, 11 under. Patrick Burke with that fine round of 66 today. Tim Heron continuing his good play. Kirk Triplett. I always see his name up in the top 20. Now let's go back to 16. Phil Mickelson, where yesterday he hit the flag stick. This with an iron, 222 yards, probably a three iron. I think a shot yesterday would have gone in if the, the pin wouldn't have been in the hole. I did too, John, but he didn't have a very, not having a very good day today, but that's a marvelous second shot here at the par 5, 16. Let's go to 14. And Colin Montgomery getting ready for his second at 14. Gary Koch. Dan, he's got 197 yards to the flag. He's taking a four iron. I think this is a crucial shot for Colin. He's got to be careful now. He works the ball left to right, and if he is going to go with this flag, he's got to bring all the trouble on the left into play. And all that trouble are the trees and the bunkers, which stretch up along the green. He is going right at it. What a brave shot this is. Took it left, trying to cut it back in. My goodness. <laughs> What a shot by Montgomery. Just hit on the collar on the left portion of the green. And now. Tommy Tolles, seven feet to go 16 under and take the lead. Center cut and he is playing strong with great composure. He's got four, excuse me, five very tough holes left to play. Freddie Couples. Johnny, the back of this green is probably the flattest portion of the, one of the flattest greens you'll see back on this back nine. And uh, a, miss, a lot of misreads on this particular green because you can't really tell which way the break's going. The drainage goes to the right down the hill, and you got a little back pocket where it can move that way too. So depending on the speed, it could go either way almost. Yeah, I've been talking about this uh, pretty much the whole telecast of how when you're in the back of these greens and you're putting uh, parallel to them, uh, you think it should go to the front, but uh, we've seen most of the putts missed on these kind of putts. This is, I don't think, breaks at all. I think if he hits a little softer, it could move a little bit to his right. If he gives it a good firm stroke, it's almost a dead center putt.
See, it actually goes the other way, if anything. And uh, good putt, too. He started straight in. Kenny Perry, eagle putt to go 15 under. That's where it gets very fast, picks up speed, has a chance. Just out of the right side of the hole. Tommy Tolls with a one shot lead at the par three. Seven iron. Let's just throw it in the middle of the green and let it draw back. But he has come up well right and short to 16. Well, up on the green at 16 to Kenny Perry to finish this off on in two. This for his sixth birdie of the day and to go to 14 under and an outside chance. Let's go back to 14. Birdie attempt, Colin Montgomery after a gutsy approach shot. Feeding it down, and that is a rare birdie at 14 for Montgomery. Took a gamble going right at the mm. pin, and it pays off. Looks like it's in the middle of the cup, but takes a last-minute break, and wow, that was a well-played birdie, though. 14, the toughest hole being played today as Montgomery ties tolls at 16 under. Back down on the course, the Island Green at 17. Thank you, Dan Hicks. On the tee, Kenny Perry standing at 14 under. Yardage is 140. He must shoot at this pin. He's looking at it. Will it feed down? No. The green is so soft that all balls have held up there, John. But he stands at 14. Two back of tolls. His heart wanted to go for the pin, but his brain said last minute, you're not going to the right. <laughs> now, Phil Mickelson started at nine, is two over for the day, seven under for the championship. He birdied 16. And you see going out, uh, birdie to start, bogey, double bogey at eight, bogey at 15, birdie at 16, nine iron. They have some special fans there at 17. Back to 13. And Tommy Toll surveying this long birdie attempt at 13. Roger? Well, he's got every bit of 50 to 60 feet. Real straight, right, Rod? Uh, this is getting a little bit right, right to left, John. <laughs> this is a beat die fun putt right here. This thing will go about oh, 18 to 20 feet on the upper level. And then once it peaks over that, it'll run straight downhill and to his left. And you can see that ridge that you can see that lighter portion is there is the ridge. He could almost miss this putt on the wrong side of the ridge if he didn't watch out. You know that, right? <laughs> you get real close to it. I mean, it's just a huge break, and he'll have to muster up all his composure to two-putt here. There you can see that uh, that uh, shiny line there, that uh, demarcation line of where the ridge starts to move left. Can't play too much break, can you? Well, you could miss I mean, the if ridge. You, if you, what I'm saying is if you... <laughs> don't end up on top I mean you know it's gonna go left of the hole and passed most likely tough tough putt well it was paced well but underneath the hole really not too bad from there John he just uh, you know did as good as he could do it was an impossible putt almost to get a gimme to 15 Alan Montgomery. Par four, 426 yards, but strays off the fairway left. Last year, Lee Jansen won this championship five under. Currently, there are 45 players better than five under. As uh, fast and firm last year, this year, rain softened greens receptive. I had some wind last year was a key thing, and the rough was about three times longer. That was, if there's anything controversial about this <laughs> year's tournament, is that the rough was not grown up like it was last year, and they blame that on cool weather. Uh, what's the total? 
Brett Couples at 16, his second shot. Dan Poles with this group. Daniel? Well, we're talking about over down here. He's got 201 to the front left, Dave, but 212 to the front right, and then 223 back of the hole. So I think he's got to go with a two iron to, to make sure that he carries it. If he does hang it out a little bit to the right, it carries that front uh, grass bunker up there. But, uh, you know, this is the problem with this. He's got an uphill lie in the wind. There isn't a lot, but what it is here is a little bit into him. So if it does do anything, it could upshoot a little bit on him. He has selected a two iron. He's got it going high and left to right. This is the, might have blocked it though. Oh, what a bounce. He got the bounce of it. That's like the bounce he got at number 12 at Augusta, at Augusta what he won. <laughs> well, it didn't hang up on the bank like number 12 did, but it did bounce forward, which a lot of them have done from that area today. So I'm standing there with this two iron and basically trying to hit it close. It was a perfect club. Uh, I cut the ball and I actually overcut it and it was hanging and uh, I thought it was in the water for sure. And uh, it hung on the edge and kicked down onto the fringe. It was a huge break, not a bad shot, just, just turned out lucky. If he carried it a little farther, it might have got, gotten wet, but it landed just on the down slope. Look at him, wondering, hoping, uh, missed it. He's going, oh, really? In the crowd. They like that? Just, just dawning on him. Uh-oh, a little <laughs> grin there. I, I don't know if you see something we didn't see, Dave, but from our angle, it looked like it would hit right there and just plop in the water. But uh, No, no. The, is this bank goes the other way there, John. And Fred this week has had a little bit of what you've got, you know, a little bit of that uh, problem with the cold or something. Well, whatever that was, he'd like to have it be contagious. <coughs> He's drawn a poor lie in the left rough, 197 yards, 167 to the front. Taking a five iron. Just hoping to carry the ball around the front part of the green and have it release and run back to the hole. So he landed it just right. I don't know if it'll get through that hollow or not. To 13. And Tommy Tolls, crucial par saving putt. tied with Montgomery at 16 under. Couples just one off the pace at 15 under. And you can see the hole in the middle. It's number 15. Let's take a look at this shot. Uh, he's given up on it right now. He thinks it's definitely in the water. You can see it hits the side of that hill there, which you couldn't tell from the other camera angle uh, that it was sloping so much to the left. You'd think it would hop straight and hang on the board or go in, and it, it just ricocheted straight left, which uh, pretty nice break, actually. Well, John, if it hadn't been sloped to the left, you're right. You know, it, it would have bounced probably straight into the water. But the way it is, it kicked to the left, and a number <laughs> of them have with that. It looks like a little sort of a bowl there. So let's go to 17. All right, Dave Marr. Standing two back. Kenny Perry for birdie. It's a fun putt. You just get it started and let the hill be your friend. It would be his seventh of the day, no. Back at 15, Colin Montgomery for birdie. He's gone a good distance by. Currently tied with Tommy Tolls at 16 under for the championship lead. Speaking of Tolls, 14. He is out in the fairway. So is Roger Malby. Roger. Tommy's got 189 of the flag. Wind now slightly against, not a lot of it. But this is a real sucker pin here. You should name here. Right of the hole would be fine. And he's got this ball going at the center of the green. Good, safe shot by Tolls, unlike the route that uh, Montgomery took. And we'll 
movie to 15. And Colin Montgomery now with this little tester for uh, his par. He tied for ninth here in 94. He uh, told us he happened to be in the weight room at the hotel, came down and jumped on the scales. He, he had a smile on his face, and I said, what do you have? He says, 216. He said, from 250. He said, I'd like to get to 206. He said, it's, I don't feel I've lost any power, and yet by losing all that extra weight, I feel so much freer in my swing. Couples for Eagle in the top left. Montgomery for his par. Couples for Eagle. He's going to break left. Oh, oh man! Fred Couples, Eagle, goes to 17 under in a one-shot lead. Woo, what a time to get a good break, and what a time to hold a putt. Anything it kind of went left and then went to the right, um, but it was, you know, there's the big ridge to the left. Uh, everything else, I was, I was on the right front. It, it was just as flat as could be. When I was going up 16, I was a shot behind, and I and I knew I needed to birdie 16. Uh, and when I made that, I, I really got a rush. You always know when you get a big roar, they're following somebody very popular. Um, I did, like I said, I didn't know it was Freddie, but I had. An inclination that it was, uh, t you know. Fortunately for me, you know, in, in 12 minutes there's a scoreboard up on the green, so I was getting ready to find out who it was. I wonder if there's a more popular player in the world of golf than this man right here. One eagle, five birdies today for Fred. Seven under, not a bogey. Well, if you look in their Webster's next year, it'll have under serendipity, it'll show Fred Couples, 16th hole. And just when you need it. All right, just from off the green. That's what great players do. They take advantage of great breaks. And just to confirm the popularity, uh, Dave Marr, here at 18, this big gallery saw it on the huge screen, and they cheered as loud as those who saw it. <laughs> Eyes on. Wow, that is some eagle. Well, those are the things you never forget, right, John? After it's all over and a long time from now, you'll be thinking about that if he goes on to win, obviously. Well, as Fred Couples walks to the tee at 17, Past winner, he was 24 years old, a very youthful Fred Couples. He was boom boom then. As Dick Enberg said earlier, his last win was the 1994 Buick Open. This just his fifth event of 1996 because of back problems. sweeter when something like that happens. Now this is Couples 13th Players Championship. He has dealt with the Island Green many, many times before. This week he's played 17 in birdie, bogey, and a par yesterday. Now let's move back to 14. Tommy Tolls for birdie. Roger, I imagine Tommy Tolls, even though uh, it's a little ways away, 16 heard the roar. And there he is at 17. Trump. All right, thank you, Dan Hicks. Fred Couples has come from four back when this round started to take the lead with that eagle at 16. Yardage, 140. 
Trump, it's time to regroup a little bit. I think that walk over the people are just going nuts along this 17th here. And, uh, you know, if you can't get excited about golf right now, you just, uh, you're not a golfer. This is great stuff out here. But this yardage for Freddie is perfect yardage, 140. It's just a solid nine iron. He's got a little bit of wind behind him. The flag's just sitting there still, but there is a little bit of air up uh, behind him, right to left. Should be just a nice solid nine iron. Got a perfect backdrop back behind it, so if he does hit a little bit firmer, ball should come back towards the hole. Satisfied. 216. Colin Montgomery now one shot back. This at 16. The hole at couples just eagles. Sort of got a thin fade going, but hits the down slope. Well, it's not a hole that sets up good for his left to right kind of shot, but now his second shot set up nicely as we go back to 14. And Tommy Tolls, this four par to remain one back. Solid. He's still got 15. Remember, he's got the par 5 16th to deal with, so it's far from over. It really needs to be said, though, he probably is level with, really, with uh, Montgomery and Tolls. They have not played the uh, finish 16. So right now, he knows probably if he studied it or thought about it, he's about a level with those two guys because they're probably going to birdie that hole. Let's move ahead to 18, gentlemen. And Kenny Perry currently resting in fourth place, three from the leader couples for par. A lot of money on this putt. Drops him back to share for the Rocco Mediate and Fuzzy Zeller. A 69 for Perry today. He led with a 65 in the opening round. At this famed signature hole at the TPC at Sawgrass and the walk up on the green for the leader Fred Couples. Colin Montgomery. On that 16th is in the fairway, and that's a birdie. Maybe as Couples has shown us an eagle hole for him. And his shot, he has the most perfect shot for this hole location that you can have. Just whether or not he is uh, gutsy enough to try. He tried it on 14, pulled it off like nobody else. And right now he can just aim right at the NBC sign right there and just drift it right and work it off that hill. So uh, of course uh, he knows that he is not ahead or. Uh, he's behind Freddie from the roar, and I'm sure his caddies and informed him. So he's going to probably play aggressively. Well, Johnny, he knows just where he stands. He has been looking at every leaderboard, and his head jerked around when he heard the roar from up here at 16. He has 232 yards to the hole, 210 to the front. He has taken a three wood. The only difficulty with the shot, a little bit of a right to left side hill lie. Solid contact. It's too far right. It needs to go. Needs to go. Oh, my word. It hurts. So Montgomery wet at 16. And now to Fred Couples at 17. And Dick, the experience of Fred Couples, he waited for Montgomery to hit that shot. He was not going to address this putt until that ball was in the air. And what a difference three feet made on that hole for those two men. When he watched the ball splash right in front of the right of pine. It's about 22 footer coming down the hill. This will be going very slow as it approaches the hole.
Three and then a two for Fred Couples, and the cheers reverberate throughout the TPC at Sawgrass. I didn't like the way it looked coming back into the grain, and I have a tendency to hit up on putts, and when you're into the grain, they'll bounce a little bit. So I felt like I could trickle it down there, maybe a couple feet short at worst, but I was not going to have it go four or five feet by, and it went in just trickling, so it, it, was, it was perfect just sitting there in that fairway, all of a sudden you hear another roar. And it, sound, it sounded like it came from the same, same spot. Um, you really couldn't tell the difference between you know, the roar on 16 green, the roar on 17 green. But uh, it was the same type of roar, just as loud, so you have to assume that it's coming from the same player. Um, still didn't know it was Freddie, but you know, like I said, you know, instead, of, instead of staying focused and ignoring all the elements around me, um, I allowed that stuff to creep in, kind of bother me a little bit. Interesting how in such a slow game, how fast it can go. Johnny, if, through no fault of his own, he parted the difficult 14th hole, one of the hardest holes in the course, and is now two shots back. This is seven Aaron from 172 yards. Left of the hole at the very left side of the green. Oh. Roger, I just don't think he had a clue that Fred Couples gonna be eight under at this point for the round. Now Couples marches toward 18 as the gallery building around him. You got to see this scorecard. I mean, this is a final round. Players championship. Birdie three, five. And then other ones in the front nine. Then 12, 16. Eagles 16, of course. Birdie 17. No one's ever shot lower than 65 in the final round of this championship. A par at 18 will give a Couples a 64. The fourth shot of Colin Montgomery. Desperately needs to get up and down. To stay 16 under and just a stroke back. So he's left himself about 10 feet, about two strokes back, I beg your pardon. As Couples has gone to 18. And Step Couples back. owns the uh, record here, Dave, on this for 63. And Fred Couples yesterday on 18 hit the most beautiful soft draw I have ever seen him hit. And he probably right now should be thinking that exact same thing that he uh, saw yesterday when he hit it. Johnny Miller is going with a three one off the tee. And this is a real good play for him because uh, even though the fairways are soft, you can hit that driver through the fairway real easy. Couples in 92, of course, record 63. And then Greg Norman tied that in uh, 94. And it's so hard for the gallery to restrain themselves. They're, they're so excited. I mean, and so Fred wants them to be as calm as he is. Oh, well, he's got it heading up the right side. He's got to turn over. He's going to catch the right rough. Well, not where he wants it because uh, that leaves some possibilities. Colin makes his putt there and birdie 17. Who knows what might happen? I thought I was a couple shots ahead on the tee. Uh, it's still an uncomfortable tee shot for me because I don't really draw the ball. And I just hit it straight and I pushed it out to the right. But, uh, you know, not the end of the world. Let's take a look at his head action and see if he slides his left hip in front of it. Very quiet, 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 quiet. And watch the hip action. A lot of times he gets so far in front of it with the lean in there, gets a little ahead. And I'm sure his last thought was, hey, I can live with a little right, but I'm not going left. Let's go to 15 and Tommy Tolles, third shot. Tough little shot. Stay, stay up there. Don't go down that hill. So he has a tough putt for his par to 17. Back at 16. 16. Colin Montgomery. This to stay within two. All of a sudden, what was a 
very close race so far today. No bogeys for Colin. This birdie's at five, seven, nine, and 14, plus the eagle at two. Those two roars by couples gang out there, I'm sure, are very disconcerting and didn't help these guys. Never does when it's for the other guy, John. This should break a little bit left. Did he hit it? Did he hit it? No, it never had the speed to hold the line. So Colin, if the ball in the water, drops a shot, makes his first bogey of the day, and drops to 15 under. Mm. And three shots back. Let's go to 15. Now it's Tommy Tolls now in second place, and this for his par. Well, this is about 15 feet, and it's just gotten over the crest of the hill, John. So I think the very, very first part of this putt is straight, then it should move right as it gets near the hole, but very slightly. That's to keep from going three behind. <laughs> Disappointing. Well, like lightning striking, uh, Fred Couples' success followed by some hiccups by Montgomery and Tolls, and now Couples with a cushion as he has to play a tough second shot at 18. I don't know if you will uh, be aware of what's happening on the leaderboard right now because a lot has happened uh, by two guys who were right with him, obviously, and I, I don't know, that could change if, whether or not he just sort of lays it up with a wedge and hits another wedge or tries to be a little bit uh, more bold. But you can see he's got not only rough, but some trees and water is the big issue left, so. Well, Johnny, he's got a good lie over here, but uh, he, if, if he goes to this green, <laughs> I don't know if you call it stupidity or not, but I, he'd have to aim it probably 20 yards out into the water and cut it around there. I think the best play is probably just take a pitching wedge over top. Let's look at it. We've seen that this. The, you can see the ball is just right in this area right here. And these trees, you can't tell too much, but they're sticking out enough that he's got to aim like right in this area and move it back to the right. And when you're in the rough, you're asking an awful lot when you're trying to move the ball left to right, even though Fred can hit that shot as well as anybody. But uh, he knows what he's doing right now. I don't like the shot by Tolls yesterday where he uh, laid up, made bogey, and preserved his two-shot lead going into this final round. Looks like an X out there. Johnny, I'm not sure he knows it right now. He's holding a three-shot lead, and uh, you know he didn't know that Colin Montgomery made bogey back there on 16. So that may make a dick. You know, if he if he knew that he had that, he may just lay this ball up. But I, I think it's his only play anyway. I don't think he. Uh, I think he can make four from 100 yards in front of the green, but he certainly can make six or seven if he tries to go out and around. It appears that he's taken some sort of a, a four iron or something. He may try to hit something, a real hard cut, and keep it low and try to run it up the gap. Not much loft on this club, so I'm guessing this is either a three or four iron. If I was a caddy, I think I would have taken and handed him yeah. three clubs and run away with the rest of them. It would have been sand wedge, pitching wedge, and a nine iron. <laughs> He's swinging like he's going to take a full rip at it and just try to really cut this ball hard. It just was not that difficult of a shot. But to fade it, you know, at that time it might have seemed harder. But uh, when you're standing there and you know you don't want to go left because you drop it way back and all that, and I thought chipping the ball down the fairway uh, was not quite the smartest shot. I just felt like it was a pretty easy shot. Great shot going towards the right front of the green. Could catch those mounds over there. That is one heck of a golf shot there. You don't know how good that is. Wow. What, a, <laughs> what courage by couples and then the execution. Driving 16. Beautiful 
drive. Very soft in that low part to the left of the fairway. At 16, and let's go to 17. Tee shot, Colin Montgomery. Nine iron. Coming off the bogey at 16. Must shoot at the pin. And does. The other ball belongs to Ernie else. And ahead to 18. 36 year old Fred Couples, a former champion of the Players Championship, initially introduced to golf by his father, who worked for the Seattle Parks and Recreation Department. Arguably the most popular golfer on the circuit, and he is greeted by a standing ovation. The 18th was certainly fun to walk up and, and accept the applause. Uh, again, you know, I have not. You know, the Ryder Cup was a thrill last year uh, to play on, and it was very loud. Uh, but last year, I don't think I had too many chances. This year at Riviera, which is, as you know, my favorite spot, it was it was pretty noisy. But basically, today was a long time waiting, and, and I, I feel good because of the way I played. three holes what talent he has displayed both outside and inside eight under par final round coming to 18. thing about this is because of the going through so much fringe and coming up over that ridge it's going to be real hard to get the right speed on this I think if he was going to take a little sandwich he would take the, the, the fringe out of the play and, and pitch it onto the green he may be a little bit more successful but I think if he can get this within three or four feet he'll be very very happy just want to get it up there inside about 10 feet and take his chances from there It's a beauty. It's a beauty. A dream finish. That putt for a 3 2 4 and a 64 final round. Mm. Freddie. Oops. Meanwhile, that's 16. Tommy Tolls. 232 yards to the flag. Two iron got muddled over the top of the ball. Oh, it's left and low. Watch out, trees. Tried to hit a two iron off of a little bit of a downslope. I was, you know, a low ball hitter, not real comfortable with trying to lift anything. And usually if I lifted it, you know, I, not a good result would, would, would turn out. So I just caught the forward part of the mound in front of me. You know, the ball kind of ricocheted up. It didn't really take a lot of velocity off of it, but it did kick it to the left. And then, you know, the ball got down there, just barely cleared that live oak. And then kind of just, it just, it just started the, the ball rolling in the wrong direction. Let's go to 18. Scott Gump playing with Fred Couples. Well, Scott's hit the ball fantastic in the back now. He just hasn't been able to do anything with the putter. Looking for his biggest check of the year, maybe of his career. For his round, uh, he doubled 17.
30 year old from Orlando and fifth year on the tour out of the University of Miami. So many good players Johnny Miller it's uh, you know in that middle age group uh, I use that middle age 24 25 years old it seems like out here anymore but uh, this kid really played a solid round today and uh, had a lot of opportunities for birdie and then I uh, you know unfortunately knocks it over the green make double on 17 but uh, real good tournament for him Let's see if he can knock this in for par. Three final round for Scott Gump, and he was eyewitness to some spectacular play by the man who's about to win this championship, Brett Couples. Straight as you get for the best ever final round in the 22-year history of this event. Maybe the most exciting, also. event of the golf season six hundred thirty thousand dollars to the winner who played it so uh, richly Tommy tolls an outside chance if he could uh, call upon some uh, heroics let's check on how he's doing at 16 the first thing he has to do is make a birdie here Roger if you checked his line He's got a pretty good line, Dave. He got a bad break on the tee shot with the mud all over the ball, but got a good break here. He's got a good line. Slightly awkward stance next to this bunker, but uh, all things considered, it could have been a lot worse. What do you think he's going to try to do? He's got a bad angle, doesn't he, to get, try to get it close? Well, not too bad, really. He can fly to the back part. And now let it release. Oh, good shot. That's Come a good on. play. fringe out of the play and, and pitch it out of the green he may be a little bit more successful but I think if he can get this within three or four feet he'll be very very happy. Just want to get it up there inside about 10 feet and take his chances from there. It's a beauty. It's a beauty. A dream finish. That putt for a 3 2 4 and a 64 final round. Mm. Freddie. Oops. Meanwhile, at 16. Tommy Tolls. 232 yards to the flag. Two iron got muddled to the top of the ball. Oh, it's left and low. Watch out, trees. Tried to hit a two iron off of a little bit of a downslope. I was, you know, a low ball hitter, not real comfortable with trying to lift anything. Usually, if I lifted it, you know, I, not a good result would, would, would turn out. So I just caught the forward part of the mound in front of me. You know, the ball kind of ricocheted up. It didn't really take a lot of velocity off of it, but it did kick it to the left. And then, you know, the ball got down there, just barely cleared that live oak. And then kind of just, I just it just started the, the ball rolling in the wrong direction. Let's go to 18. Scott Gump playing with Fred Couples. Well, Scott's hit the ball fantastic in the back. Now he just hasn't been able to do anything with the putter. Looking for his biggest check of the year, maybe of his career. For his round, uh, he doubled 17. <laughs> 30 year old from Orlando, and fifth year on the tour out of the University of Miami. 
So many good players, Johnny Miller, at, uh, you know, in that middle age group. Uh, I use that middle age, 24, 25 years old, it seems like out here anymore. But uh, this kid really played a solid round today and uh, had a lot of opportunities for birdie. And then, uh, you know, unfortunately knocks over the green, make double on 17. But uh, real good tournament for him. Let's see if he can knock this in for par. Three final round for Scott Gump, and he was eyewitness to some spectacular play by the man who's about to win this championship, Brett Couples. Straight as you get. For the best ever final round in the 22-year history of this event, maybe the most exciting, also. 